This recent viral clip from Japan is making mainland Chinese tourists look bad, but was everybody too quick to jump to conclusions? Let's talk about it. Yeah, I get there's some bad past history, but nowadays it seems like everything bad from East Asia is Chinese. Everything good is Japanese and Korean. It's not fair. We can't win, even when it's not us. Let's run the clip. <laughs> This viral video of a man kicking Nara's deer prompts a local crackdown. The deer in Nara Park are historically revered as divine messengers of Shinto gods and have been protected since ancient times. Causing serious injury or death to a deer can result in up to 5 years in prison or a fine of up to 1 million yen, which translate to $6,900 in USD. The video that surfaced in July has led to emergency patrols and officers distributing flyers and using loudspeakers in multiple languages to inform tourists about the legal consequences of harming the animals. Despite efforts, most cases are hard to prosecute if there is no clear evidence of serious harm such as broken bones or bleeding a senior police official noted boom look at oh, the comments section andrew dude. chinese tourists in japan they simply don't know how to act right it's always the mainlanders mainland chinese 100 percent for sure guess what andrew they found out this guy kicking the deer was not Chinese. Yeah, man. So we got to talk about the reputation that Chinese tourists have. Okay. Which is not a great reputation, by the way. But how everybody's so quick to jump to conclusions and how even a video of someone who's not Chinese can make Chinese people look bad. And, you know, it's just something that's going to continue. It's something that I feel because, you know as a Chinese person. So anyways, guys, we're going to talk about it. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. Check out Smile Sauce on Amazon.com. And real quick, you were not fooled. Even me, I'm not going to lie. I was fooled by everybody's presumption that this guy acting badly was Chinese. As it came out, he is either Korean or Japanese or a Korean guy who speaks Japanese. Right, guys, first of all, I'm going to go into why Chinese tourists have a negative reputation, right? Or Chinese people have scarcity mindsets are always rushing to grab the crab legs and blah, blah, blah. Listen, we're going to get into that, but I do want to clear the air <laughs> and clear Chinese men of this because this guy kicking the deer, I was not convinced he was Chinese. So I looked more into it. And as it turns out, if anything, he's probably Japanese. Mm. So let me just break it down. Aside from this news article from Japan Today that literally goes on to break down, he has a like a Japanese branded shirt on. He's even heard saying Jama or Doke, which is you're in my way, move it in Japanese. So if he's speaking Japanese, what are the chances that he's Chinese? He could be a Chinese guy who learned Japanese, but unlikely. Right, and some people are saying that the Japanese are going to blame him on being ethnically Korean living in Japan because sure. that's a whole stereotype that like ethnic Chinese right. or ethnic Koreans like have worse manners than native <laughs> Japanese or something. I don't know what... Like, here's the here's the key. He's not mainland Chinese. Yes, he. It's not. There's no evidence to show that he is Chinese. That he's a mainland Chinese tourist. I mean, all right. I'm just gonna point out a couple of things. One of it's a, a, a funny thing. Look at how he kicked. That's a trained kick. Look at these screenshots. That is a karate or taekwondo kick. This guy knows. This guy either he's walking with his back straight. What he did military service or something. So, anyways, I'm not saying he's Korean. I'm just saying he's. Not Chinese for yeah, sure. I think it's most likely that he's a mentally disturbed native Japanese citizen because of the, uh, he's wearing like the Japanese cut, like samurai jeans. Like that's a very Japanese cut, like yeah. the draping. Listen, the confidence of him abusing those deer was not Chinese. I'll say that. But anyways, guys, first of all, uh, sometimes the deer do attack people. So maybe he got attacked first, but we no, no, know. here's a clip of the deer attacking people, by the way. At the end of the day, listen, they are wild animals, all right? But they're Japanese, so... And, and you know why I think that people thought that immediately this guy was uh, Chinese? is because there's a clip earlier of a Chinese guy, like, shaking hands with one of the deer. But technically, you're, like, still not supposed to do that. And there was a Japanese man berating the Chinese guy for, like, shaking hands with the deer. Right. So, so a Chinese guy was was doing something he wasn't supposed to, but not necessarily in an abusive way. He's just shaking the deer's hand and trying to get close to the animal, but you're not supposed to touch the animals. So he's not following the rules technically either, but he's also not going around karate, taekwondo, kicking, side kicking these deer in the butt and slapping them in the face. So um, anyways, guys, I'm not here to say 
all Chinese tourists are good. And I'm not here to say that no Chinese tourists in history have ever done something wrong. Of course they have. But I'm just saying this guy in this video probably isn't. I mean, look at his face. It's like, he's just, the way his face looks is not Chinese fully, if you guys know about everything. But I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is, why was even I tricked? Andrew, I know you you stayed solid. You, you weren't tricked. Even I was kind of tricked. I was like, Wait, why did this guy who's in the Japanese streetwear, because I could tell that the clothing style was still, like, very uniqlo out or whatever, but I was like, why is, like, I guess it just fit with the global stereotype, right? Yeah. And if you want to look online, Andrew, there's, like, literally, like, 300 posts about, mm. like, bad Chinese tourist manners. So that's why people, like, just went into that stereotypical line of thinking. Right, no, no, and, and again, like, I'm not going to, I, in a way, blame people for jumping to that conclusion, but if you're trying to pin it on somebody, that's going to be your initial reaction because they have the worst reputation. reputation. However, other Asian guys have a reputation for being more abusive than Chinese guys. But anyways, we're talking physical to violence for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chinese are not that violent, but they are definitely rude. So I think real quick, we can talk about why there's certain reasons and cultural reasons why a lot of Chinese people, and it has to do with the large population, has to do right, a little right, bit right. with right, Andrew, What are you referring to? Cutting in line, running to the front of the line of a buffet when the seafood crab legs get there, uh, accidentally, or, you know, maybe, I wouldn't say with the most hate in their heart, but damaging public property, or like, there was a kid who was like, scribbling with a, something yeah, on, on, on no, an Egyptian I mean, monument. Definitely or, some of them act like spoiled children. And I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of like, Chinese people who kind of stand in the way of the elevators when they open and and just these that, little that's probably the standing in front of the elevators is probably the most obvious one that in my opinion I'm gonna be honest I don't think Japanese or Koreans do it as much sure okay like, no like, I, stay, I agree I agree because I even seen super rich Chinese do that yeah listen we've been around I've been around different economic classes of Chinese people from different origins and different immigration waves we're around a lot of Chinese people that's why I knew this guy wasn't Chinese but. I'm not going to say that Chinese tourists don't do rude things. All right, right? you're saying they, they, it's you've seen the photos of them going to like tropical countries and then grabbing the starfish out of the water and being like, "Ying ying gets out, pian." You know, but, but it's like they don't know what they're doing, but it's such a bad look and it reflects on everybody. But they just don't know because they're just like, "Wow, this is very bad." Like this. Sometimes when uneducated Chinese people want to live life, they just kind of break the rules. All right. So, anyways. What I'm saying is, I guess my question is, and we, there's so many cultural reasons why, right? Scarcity mindset from the well, biggest well, country. Well, from, well, from coming out of communism. You're coming out of communism. Um, just a single child syndrome, you know, Xiao Huang Di. You got these little princes and princesses and spoiled children. And it is true that the way that, I guess, in mainland China, the way they coach about interpersonal pings it's kind of like can be hierarchical or feudalistic a little bit. Yeah, listen, guys, the whole thing. I mean, Chinese tourists had such a bad reputation at one point, like 10 years ago. China, the government had to say something about the tourism. It was like, hey, guys, by the way, yeah, everybody uh, thinks we're acting bad. So you guys got to act better, okay? Because there's too many of these weird stories. But also Chinese tourists spend the most at these luxury stores. So yeah. some it, people love no, them. No, they stimulate the economy because they're the generally some of the only people that were flush with cash because all the other countries have generally yeah. went through their uh, f like first world capitalism arc earlier. So, so I, the, obviously when you're going through your arc, you, you have the more discretionary spending. I, I guess my question is, as a Chinese American, David, is... Can Chinese ever, Chinese tourists, maybe let's particularly mainland Chinese, ever live down this stereotype of having bad manners? Okay, here's the problem. I'll tell you this. Number one, they were kind of slower than you would think to come out of it. Like their manners didn't necessarily track with their personal wealth. Because you know how there's an assumption of like your personal wealth, you become a classier, more sophisticated person, your manners become just like one to one in line. No, like let's there was say a your lag. Family. There was a lag for the Ch mainland Chinese because they hadn't got the coaching. So it's almost like it's just like Chinese basketball. You know, they're super good at like ISO skills and like imitating Kobe and stuff like that and Kyrie. But just the gameplay is the gameplay IQ of five on five schematic basketball is not there. I mean, you're kind of like referring to almost like a Beverly Hillbillies type situation where no, I'm not saying all Chinese are hillbillies, but I'm saying like let's say their family quickly economically changed status makes a lot more money. But I got a bunch of assets, right? But it doesn't change 
how some you of the raise manners the kids. are like from stuck a little bit. I, I guess you could say whatever lower class scarcity mindset from a, the situation that they were emerging from. Yeah, like it didn't track one to one. And then number two, I think the other part that's bad is maybe there's not ones being ultra polite like Japanese, like. Japanese are known for being so overly polite, even more polite than Koreans, to the point where it's almost like they f- people feel like in 2024, Andrew, agree with me or not, they're absolved of everything. Mm. Like people can't believe that a Japanese is misbehaving, even though they have a lower probability, but there's still a probability. Yeah. Like this I, guy was probably Japanese who was kicking the deer. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and I, I guess what I'm saying is now we're like so stuck in these like patterns of thinking like Chinese are rich and rude. Koreans are passionate and fiery. Occasionally, if you offend them, they could be rude to you, especially if you offend na- their nationalism, love of Korea and Japanese can never be rude. Right. Like that is the would you agree with me? That is the overarching most people's like simple one three word analysis of East Asia. I agree. I agree. And honestly, that's how people emotionally think about things. And, you know. It's, it's like a lot of things. Listen, a lot of people are kind of unfortunately in a media sense defined by their worst actors. You know, whether it's in that community, this community, you know, Chinese people. Venezuelans like, right now, right? Venezuelans have a bad reputation. Like, like if you hear the word Venezuelans in America, you're not thinking of something positive, unfortunately, right? Right now in 2024, right. due to the media wins, we're not right. talking about ourselves personally. Because maybe... You know, it's not like you knew a bunch of Venezuelans before, and then now when you hear about them in the news, it's something negative. And, you know, that's why when a lot of people don't know Chinese people or have not seen enough uh, good mainland Chinese, then, of course, they're going to jump to the conclusion that this guy was Chinese, but there was no evidence to show that he was Chinese, you know? But, again, there are a lot of stories, and I won't deny it, of, of Chinese pushing their cart into you they're coming in line they're spitting spitting is a huge one i know that like you know no you're talking about garvey av behaviors yeah <laughs> yeah dude it's dude six. it's there i'm not denying it doesn't happen i'm not denying it. it's just anyways i think that i guess i mean it's kind of like the situation with indians right now too right like indians are getting it i would say pretty bad on social media and maybe a lot of people are they're not thinking of the butter chicken at the buffet that they grew up with. Now everybody is being so viscerally having their dopamine or their sensory spiked by these quite titillating street food videos from the streets of uh, India, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess things are getting better. Everybody's acting better. It's slow. But, but the stereotypes even sh- I would say Chinese are coming out of this bad mannerisms. They're coming. They're, they're, there will always be Chinese with bad manners, by the way. There's always going to be bad people of each group. But yes, I agree that Chinese mainlanders are definitely, this next generation are acting better than they were. The ratio. Yeah. There is a better ratio of better manners every generation. Right. But of course, the stereotype stands. And that's why even other Asians are quick to throw Chinese under the bus on something like this. You, Look, you see the comments? Oh, mainland Chinese, for sure. People were like 1,000%, I'm sure. And it's crazy to say, bro, even, like you said, you you questioned it, but even me, I was a little bit tricked. It's okay, and it's natural, but you got to check yourself sometimes because the details weren't there. There was no confirmation. We were taking a Tesla Model Y driven by a guy from India with a turban the other day to Brooklyn Mirage. Uh, And I remember we were playing, uh, we were all dressed very stylishly, we were dressed, playing some, uh, what are the EDM mashups Girl talk, or whatever. Mash-ups, whatever yeah. uh, you know what I mean? Some trendy stuff. And he's like insistent that we were Korean. Right. And then when we told him we were, he, we were Chinese, it was almost like he was so disappointed because not only do I think India and Chinese have beef, but he's like, oh man, I wanted to like you guys. You guys were so cool. And like, you guys were such a, like my good customers. Uh, and I felt, but I, I didn't know what to say because I didn't want to get into a conversation of like, yeah, you liked me. That's why you're disappointed that I'm, Chinese, which is a group that maybe you thought was unlikable. But then I can't deny that maybe he's had more, it's possible he's had more enjoyable experiences with Korean passengers than with Chinese passengers too. Do you see what I'm saying? Where it's like, at what point are you, do, do you make it your life's mission to like, to just say, but you know, obviously you just say, no, I'm Chinese. That's for another video, man. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, uh, Chinese guys are off the hook for this deer incident, all right? But that's the stereotype stands for Chinese tourists, although they're getting better, but they can still be rude. And also, just 
chill out on the crab legs, man. Jeez, it's, it's a buffet. They'll, they'll it's replenish It's so tough them. because you got the people that are like from the countryside that are more like exposed to the hyper scarcity mindset and the scarcity mindset to me, I'll, I'll, that's a time for another video. The scarcity mindset is the thing that drives the elevator thing and it drives the, the king crab legs at the buffet thing too. All right, everybody, let us know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, this guy should not be slapping deer. That's an abusive video, to be honest, but uh, whoever he is. But Chinese men cleared. Cleared of this. <laughs> cleared these, on this one, yes, On this definitely. one. I'm not cleared, saying the other ones. On cleared this on this one. violent abusiveness against deer. Chinese dudes is clear, all right? Let's make that clear. All right, anyways, until next time, everybody, we out. Peace. Peace.